good afternoon and welcome back to the University Basketball League. The Select Seven, these universities who are starting this new concept. Today we get to see Melbourne University's home court for the first time and we also get to see University of Technology Sydney for the first time. Melbourne Uni's women are going to tip off their second game here. They're looking to bounce back after an opening day defeat. UTS, many unknowns, but that is the magic of this competition. Both teams in their final timeouts were about 90 seconds away from tip-off. There is a close-up look at the UTS huddle and their coach, Christian Jolina, about to get things started. My name is Teo Pelizzeri and joining me in the broadcast is basketball journalist and expert Roy Ward. Roy, it's a pleasure to have you along. Mate, it's uh, glorious to be with you and to be a part of this competition as it's starting off. Um, I'm sure these girls are just wrapped to be out here after 2020 and uh, to give us a chance to have a look at their talents and uh, move up to other levels. And of course, if you're not familiar with the University Basketball League, the main point of difference between the UBL and other leagues is the players are currently studying at the university they're representing and we will hear about some of the degrees and uh, also studies that players are undertaking through today's broadcasts of men and women. It's a big week in Melbourne because we've got this head-to-head -head between Melbourne Uni and UTS today and then the University of Sydney are coming down tomorrow and they will be playing against La Trobe and also Melbourne Uni and then they'll all do a swap and by Thursday we will have had four different head-to-heads and eight different contests in the men's and women's competition. Of course, uh, the women of Melbourne Uni lost 66-33 to 33, and their coach Rob Roberts wants better shot choice and better work on the boards today. So I guess when you get out so scored so thoroughly, Roy, there's always going to be a lot of things to work on. And even though UTS are out on the court, Rob Roberts is keeping his team in the huddle and just making the opponent wait. Mate, use every second you got. Look, it's going to be about energy and sort of activity for the girls of Uni, Uni Melbourne today. They need to get rebounds. They need to, to get in there and do, do things as a team because it's clear that they might not have the superstars that a few others are going to have. So teamwork's going to be the dream for them. Both the referees today are Dean Zado and man with the ball, David Bronio. And at this first tip-off, we're going to have UTS's Hannah Georges going head-to-head -head with Ainsley Nichols to get Melbourne Uni's second game and UTS's first game of the UBL underway. And of course, Melbourne Uni in the purple, UTS in the lime green. Nice contrast and well, we're going to do it all again. Jump ball, take two to get started here at the Nona Lee Sports Centre on campus here at Melbourne University, right in the heart of Melbourne. Tip off, this time goes UTS's way and Nicholas Sainsbury takes possession for the visitors and we get to see how their offence sets up for the first time. Gabriella Van Dyke working to the left and now down in the corner the early shot goes up and is good! What an opening from Maya Jelena and maybe a play that we had some expectations of coming in Roy and she's one for one from the corner to get us started. Nothing like starting with a swish like that one and uh, she's certainly going to be very active by the looks of it. Um, loves that corner shot but Look, something I like about UTS, they extended their defense straight out of that uh, out of that, that basket. Ainsley Nichols with a shot. That's an air ball and rebound goes the way of Georges. And straight into the hands of Maya Jelena, sister of the coach, Christian Jelena. And we were doing a bit of uh, late prep work pre-game, Roy. And we saw that the coach of UTS has been in the NBL system as a player and now he's getting his coaching career underway here in the UBL. Yeah, he, he was with Cairns for a while. He certainly showed some real promise. Great athlete, really good scorer. And we saw from the way his sister shot that first one, she might have a bit of that scoring talent as well. No go this time on the attack for UTS. Melbourne Uni looking for their first points. They don't want to get jumped today. Grubazic takes the shot and Jordan Grubazic can't get the drop. Didn't score last week from... A number of shots, so she needs an early bucket today just to build that confidence. And now we see Danny Paisano on the ball. Out to Ainsley Nichols. Round the key they do go. Grubazic this time hits the ring. So she's 0 for 2 early. And now Jelena comes away with the ball for UTS. And resets with Nicholas Sainsbury. Can't use the screen from outside. This would be two for two. Yeah, the, the defense has to adjust from Melbourne. They sat off uh, Chalina there, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a recipe for disaster. Studying communications at UTS. Very good reputation for journalists, actually, UTS. So, Mayor Chalina 
making a good choice both with her studies and with her shots as Melbourne Uni go underneath and they can't get a bucket to fall. Ainsley Nichols misses and on the fast break, down comes Van Dyke for UTS. On the turn on the left and that's two more and it's an 8-0 break and an early timeout because Melbourne Uni, it may be home court but it is not a welcome home at the moment. No, it's not. But this is one of the realities of starting a new season with a new team in a new competition. Uh, they're learning on the on the fly. They don't have a lot to scout off. UTS haven't played a game. They probably didn't realise that someone like Jelena can hit the three like that. They know now, and if they if they can't make adjustments, she's going to put 30 or 40 on them. So good chance for them to reassess here. And this is the reality also of the Victorian teams who would not have had much basketball last year. They would have barely played. So... A lot of these girls just getting their feel for the court again, and we'll see it with the guys' teams as well later on. Is it is it a personnel thing, and you have to start thinking about a one-to-one matchup against Jelena, or is it really more a, a team awareness of where she is around the three-pointer? Well, to start with, make her drive, get get up, get up in her face, take away that catch and shoot. She's hit two shots, catch and shoot. See what she's like off the dribble. Don't give up fouls while you get more aggressive like that. But I think we'll see whether it's Renton, whether it's one of the other guards, I'm just going to have to step out to her and make sure she doesn't have that room to catch, shoot, and uh, switch that, that shot. We don't have the clock on the screen, but I'll keep you posted that there's 7.44 to go in the first quarter here. So really early timeout for Rob Robertson, Melbourne Uni, as we see his team come out. They've got possession. So Ainsley Nichols, Bachelor of Science, Melbourne Uni going to inbound here to the captain of the team, Bella Renton. She gives it to Danny Paisano. Unmissable in the fluoro green boots today. And she's going to work here, being very closely guarded by Nicholas Sainsbury. Kicks it out. Renton with the shot, and it's another air ball coming up well short. This is a shiny Mosquera for UTS, driving it back the other way. Dropping the head was Van Dyke. Goes to the hoop, and that is just complete confidence there from Gabriella Van Dyke, and she gets two, and it's 10-zip. She is really aggressive, Taylor. I love the way she catches with intent and heads to that basket, because she's got some finishing skills. So Paisano again tries to use the benefit of a screen, leaves it for Renton. Grubazic at the top of the arc. Shot clock the enemy, two to go, and that will be a shot clock violation. In any case, coming down with the rebound was UTS and Sainsbury. Now Georges down at the baseline and that's off her own foot. So Melbourne Uni get a stop and they need that down zip 10. That'll be a confidence booster for them. They just needed to get a stop, get a, get a, get a feel for, def for the defence out there. I like the way UTS is extending this defence because it's going to rush Melbourne. It's going to move them out of whatever they want to do. We've seen so far they've barely had a good offensive set and it's because of this press. And again, causing trouble and causing a turnover. Not sure if Nichols heard a shout from behind her, but there was no one home. And so UTS will be thrilled with how that press worked out. They may have done the travelling, but they are the ones dictating the game at the moment. And Jelena is a factor in that. Spinning round to the right here and did travel. Eagle-eyed referee coming in from the blind side. And that, and that is also another good stop for Melbourne. But UTS, I really like the way they're getting shots inside the key, inside the, inside the sort of close to the basket. It's going to make a difference in this competition. You can see from our down the court shot there what a snug little arena this is. And the sort of noise you can generate in here. Three-pointer goes up, three-pointer. Or was it a foot on the line? Either way, it is good. Oh, and it Melbourne Uni get two points for Tiani Ellingworth, master of teaching. And now... Off the foot here, a chance for the turnover. Paisano driving the other way, can't buy the foul, and the shot didn't even get up. Nichols spins, plays it back out to Renton. One on one against Mosquera. Ellingworth, only player with a bucket for Melbourne Uni so far. Renton wants to join her. That's three air balls so far for Melbourne Uni, so they have not found their radar. And it's all about the defence pushing them out from UTS. It's pushing Melbourne to the perimeter. They're not comfy out there. Georges, top of the key. Jelena, again, just takes it, shoots it, drains it, and that is three from range in this first quarter. No time to think, just instinct, and that one fell. If there's a positive for Melbourne, she hit the rim on that one, so maybe she's cooling down. As we see the first foul of the game, and driving at the baseline, Tiani Ellingworth will go to the line as we take a look at the replay here, Roy, and just, yeah, 
knew exactly what was happening and that's a, a team on the same wavelength. And now because Melbourne stepped up the defence, they're running a bit of two two man, two woman game there where she, where Trelina can get the switch and have another defender. All the Melbourne defenders have to know she's the shooter, get out to her. So at the line shooting to Tiani Ellingworth, misses the first. Melbourne Uni down 11, 5.16 to go. Still plenty of time in this first quarter. So we get to see the down the court shot. And she's good this time. So still the only scorer for the home team, but has three, and it's back to a 10-point game. A lot of trust in Nicholas Sainsbury, but this time getting her pocket pick, the good steal and the return, and she gets a big block, making up for losing the handle. And so it's going to be end-to-end -end stuff. That pass finds Mosquera. Back to Jelena. Now Van Dyke, we've seen her drive to the hoop once, this time behind the back crossover and tried to do a bit too much, still gets the two, persistence pays. And that's two more for Gabriella Van Dyke. Yeah, I don't think Melbourne have a matchup for her just yet. They haven't got someone with that reach and that sort of ability to slide and be agile, so they need to find someone. Shot for three this time falls. Okay. Huge three points for Melbourne Uni. Bella Renton, the Bachelor of Science, knocks it down. 4.28 to go in the first, and it's back to 15-6. They're within double figures. And Renton and Ellingworth have looked real comfy offensively when they can just give themselves a little bit of room. Another outside shot, this time coming up short on the near side, but the putback is good, and Van Dyke starting to build a bit of a scoreboard of her own. Six points she's up to, and studying a double-degree business and law at UTS. Gabriella Van Dyke having a big first quarter. Melbourne Uni, they'll be hoping they're in the groove as Miller... Had a foot on the line, and that is a cheap turnover. It is one of the pet, hate, pet hates, the coaching killers, whatever you want to call it, stepping on that base, on that sideline or that baseline. But uh, we see it at all levels, sadly. Miller shot plenty of threes last week. We see Jessica Mashmet check in for the first time. And we've also got Morgan Foster in for Melbourne Uni for the first time today. Mashmet trying to make an impact and says... That's why I shouldn't start on the bench, maybe. Just goes end-to-end -end and gets her first two points. Might actually be why they bring her off the bench, because she can just attack the game straight away. And uh, look, Pisano's done such great defense, but now she's got a fast guard to handle. This will be tough. And that's a nice little layup, taking on the right side of the key single-handedly. Danny Pisano, two more points for the Master of Teaching. And she's right back in defense here. Big screen from Georges. Got Mashman a little bit of space. Now Van Dyke. Very left-handed, but it's doing some good work. And now plays it to Ellingworth, and up goes the shot through the key. And Mosquera is fouled, and she'll shoot two after the foul by Ellingworth. And 3:13 to go in the first quarter. It's 19 points to eight. As we take another look from under the ring, and this is where Melbourne just have to adjust their not only the defensive mindset, but when the shot goes up, they've got to all be thinking box out, rebound. Don't let my player get underneath me because we've seen this two, three times and it's basket every time. First shot is no good for Ashani Mosquera. Studying sport and exercise management. And she can't get her first points here as Foster comes in for the rebound and she'll be looking for a big game today as the tallest player in this Melbourne Uni team. Miller, first time we've seen today Number 55, Leah Hamza, or Leia Hamza, Sorry, I should say. And she's going to get a second chance here. Ellingworth. Crossover at the baseline and fouled. It's a couple of times she's been able to draw fouls, and that's maybe an avenue for Melbourne Uni back into this. It's just reward from a player who's putting in the extra work there, coming up with the scrappy rebound, coming up with the ball when it's a bit, when it becomes a bit contested. I do worry about Melbourne getting trapped in those corners or tight on that baseline because more turnovers could come from that, but... Ellingworth, she's giving him a lot of energy, a lot of hustle. So Tiani Ellingworth at the line shooting two. And hits the first. She's two for three from the stripe. And make that two for four as that one misses. And so Mashmet comes through and takes possession. Very quick player. Able to take the ball and dish off to George's. Now Sainsbury, Mashmet, head fake. Doesn't want to shoot, Georges does. And that one can't rebound in. And very aggressive down at the fall of the ball. Mashmet's come in with a point to prove in this one. And the jump ball is going to be possession going Melbourne Uni's way. UTS did not know, so they've been not quite caught out, but they're all hustling back on defense. 
They'll figure it out. Paisano takes possession. And now kicking it out wide. This is Miller's domain, but she has not managed to hit the ring there. So a couple of long-range attempts from her. Not close. By contrast, UTS are good from three. Nicholas Sainsbury knocks it down. She's also studying sport and exercise management at UTS. Mm. Player not short on confidence as we see Paisano. Interception, not quite. Hamza. Back to Tiani Ellingworth and that one hits the support holding up the ring. So the moon ball not coming off. And this is one of those tough areas for a team who's coming out of not many, not many games. We're at the back end of the quarter. Melbourne's got to manage this contest. They've got to be nice and heady and slow things down so they don't cough up a whole lot of points here. Jelena back in. Thought about the shot. Left it for Sainsbury. Good hands, but the shot wasn't a match. Certainly had a few of the men's players taking a look at this game impressed, but not able to get the shot to go with it. The, uh, the UTS men are giving their, their women's team some serious hype from the sideline here. Good on them. And speaking of hype, maybe that'll get Melbourne Uni a little bit hyped because Hamza knocks down her first three-pointer. Didn't play for Melbourne Uni against VU, so hoping to bring a different dimension to their offense. Sainsbury. This time stops and props, and there's a gap in the key, and that allows Hannah Georges to just roll through and knock down two. Something Melbourne's got to be aware of too, and I'm sure they are, is Paisano's played this whole quarter, so is Ellingworth. They can't have them tiring out too, too early here. 38 seconds to go, so a couple of shots left in this quarter. Foster, top of the key, leaves it for Miller. Shot clock an issue, hard foul. Well, not a hard foul, just a noisy foul, the slap across the arms. Certainly no imposition on Charlotte Miller. And she will go to the line for two at the uh, timeout with 29 seconds to go in the first. Yeah, look, this is a good, a good little turn there for Melbourne to drive to the basket and draw in some of the forwards from UTS, make them give away fouls. That's a way they can keep this contest a little closer, slow this team down if they're shooting three throws and uh, having to take the ball out from the baseline because of fouls. So... Important for Sydney, for UTS to keep their fouls down because they want to play this game fast and it's aided them so far when they can run. 24-12 at the moment. You see the UTS timeout taking place here, drawing up perhaps a play if they grab the defensive rebound. I wanted to ask you something, Roy. Uh, the jump ball situation we saw, UTS didn't know it was Melbourne Uni's possession. What, what are your thoughts on that rule? Would you rather have a contested jump ball? Do you like the idea of trading possession? So I've, I've been a fan of possession since it came back in. I feel like it just keeps the game flowing. A jump ball forces everyone to move around, change where they are on the court. And so often it's just a scrappy, it's a scrappy restart. If you're starting from the baseline to sideline, you're going to keep the game going. I guess we saw that at the opening tip-off. They had to go back and do it again. And it's so hard. It's not something you really work on a whole lot unless you're a centre or a power forward. And... Uh, so, yeah, I'm always a fan of just keeping the game rolling and because we have a lot of stoppages in basketball. There's no point having any extra ones. Mm. Well, we get two shots here at the free throw line for Charlotte Miller. Yet to score a point today. And that remains the case after the first shot. Should be hoping to knock down the second here. Open her account. Miller is good with the second, so she's on the board. Gap comes back to 11 points. 27 seconds to go, so the shot clock will matter on this possession here for UTS. Jelena. Back to Mashmet. Has Sainsbury. Mashmet. Out to the corner, and this one rims out first time today on the court. We've actually seen Jade Yeomans wasn't able to open her account. Four seconds to go. Time the enemy. And UTS are going to get the ball back after Renton lost the handle with 2.6 seconds to go. So Melbourne have fouls here. They might use one if they feel like she's going to get away, but otherwise I'll just keep hands out. And what came first? It was the foul. That's a uh, first little trip to the Oracle for Roy Ward today as he <laughs> knew exactly what was coming. So... 
buzz is gone. It's no foul shots, so we're done. We're done. So the first personal still counts, but on the Actually, whole... Sorry, I think they're going to come back and make them play 0.5 here. They are. So Melbourne Uni are going to get dragged out of the huddle. So in the pros, 0.5 is more than enough. In, in a situation like this, how do, you, how do the referees accurately assess whether they got the shot up or not? Is it just a gut feel? They'll go off, off the scorers. So here there's 0.5 is time for catch and shoot. So you can't, I doubt you get a dribble in, but you can catch it, get out the hand. Watch out for Cholina or um, possibly even George's here is coming to the top. George's is the choice and Good ran ball. out of time and well defended by Bella Renton to stop that ball getting away. And it's a, this, these are some of the scenarios when you're a new team in a new league. They won't have it down pack yet. What they do, what they do with 0.5 left a second to go. This is great practice. You know, we may well see that set come the end of the game if they've got a, another sort of play, another sort of close scenario. We're going to take a quick break here on coverage of the University Basketball League. We'll come back with stat leaders and the second quarter. Melbourne Uni 13 trailing UTS 24. As you rejoin us, it is quarter time of this University Basketball League match. UTS laying down a marker, 24-13, as Melbourne Uni remain in the huddle. Roy Ward, any numbers that you wanted to highlight that jump out at you after a quarter of play? Well, we saw Chalina get nine points very quickly, and she's barely had a catch since. I think Melbourne have figured out that she's the hot shooter but we've seen some other UTS players come in around the edges here. Uh, interesting with Melbourne, they've been switching into zone a little bit. I'll be interested to see just how much zone they play. I think that'll, that'll be a giveaway of their, defense, their thoughts on the defense here. So, start of the second quarter, and it begins with Mashbet on the ball. And this was the hot hand in the first quarter, maybe not in the second. Jelena loses handle. Going down the other end is Renton. Over foul. And feet were not planted when contact was made so at the baseline that is the foul on Jelena, her first personal good support work from the ref there to help his mate out and now Foster did the catch and shoot under the ring second attempt and Charlotte Miller much to the frustration of Melbourne Uni may not have started too good from the field but that's two points for Morgan Foster and that might improve her morale the master of engineering under the ring, Jelena goes up, and both referees were right on that. Hands foul, two shots. Close call there, they could have let that one go, but this is the, the strength of someone like Jelena going in hard like that and quick. Makes the defence adjust, and sometimes they adjust a little too much. And for Miller, keep shooting. You've got to keep shooting in these competitions. Um, you, don't, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, as they say. Jelena's going to have two more here. And that's going to push her into double figures as the first player to get there today, up to 10 points. Great shot from under the ring. to see the look of concentration on the face as she knocks down two for two and the gap is back out to 11 points. Early stages, we saw AK Ramakrishnan check in for the first time in this game. And she thinks about a shot upon entry but decides against it. Foster, now Grubazic. Back to Ramakrishnan. Can't get the drop. Hard fought rebound in there. Well played by the shorter player in Miller. And now Foster under the hoop is going to go to work. And that is nice low post work from Morgan Foster. And she's got four points. 
Georges is off the court, so this is a good chance for uh, for the bigs from Melbourne to uh, to get a few baskets because she's been the sort of lone centre for the UTS. No thoughts of any teammates there from Jade Yeomans. Just had eyes solely for the ring. Didn't get the fall. Maybe Melbourne Uni can get a little run on here. Miller thinks better of the shot while being closely guarded by Mashmet and then tried to drive in. No such luck. Yeomans. And again, it is just Route 1 attacking from Jade Yeomans, and this time she gets the foul. Melbourne didn't commit on her there, so she kept going to the basket. Really good read from Yeomans. As we see the rebound of the missed shot. And again, Yeomans not really even using the peripheral vision. Just had one thing in mind, and that was to go all the way to the hoop. And that's where she's ended up as we see the subs. They're, uh, they're subbing the shooter here. Let's see if she takes care of her teammate and knocks down that free throw so she comes out. There's the first one down, so Jade Yeomans, another sport and exercise management degree at UTS. That's what she's currently studying. She's two for two from the line on this trip, and we'll check out here. Coming back in was the very impressive Gabriella Van Dyke from the first quarter. Very left-handed, though, and I think that, that may, uh, may also have been a problem Melbourne Uni defending her. They just weren't anticipating that she was always going to break to the left. Well, she also, she'd pull a few Euro steps and that, just with, with the left-hand shot, that always looks a little more difficult. Miller, good defence. Jelena forces the turnover, falls into the hands of Sainsbury. Listening for the voices of her teammates, here is Van Dyke out to the corner and that is three and a big one coming down from Aishani Mosquera and Roy, you're saying foot on the line? I reckon I reckon I saw the ref so send with a low two there, but we'll see. They might have to look at it again. In any case, the gap is out to a game-high 13 points. Melbourne Uni need some scoring runs and some stops here to stay in touch. Foster. Now Renton, and that one is three, and that will get it back to a 10-point game, 30 points to 20. Although, Mosquera has been left alone. Oh, that's a travel. And now from the top of the key, Jelena, and at last she misses a three-point attempt. You suggested she might have been cooling down, Roy. In, in jest, <laughs> might I add. But maybe, much, maybe it's actually happening for real. And that was dead on straight, though. That was just, I think she just caught it a little bit low down. In any case, Melbourne Uni can't make UTS pay. Jelena gets another chance, tries to turn provider, and under at the baseline, Miller stuck to Mashmet and put the ball out. We see Danny Paisano check back in, along with Ainsley Nichols. Game's gone a little bit wild the last few minutes. I'd like to see, I think UTS will probably be the team to do it. Someone run something simple, get a good close shot. Sainsbury. Or take three. You cannot leave her open. She has been solid from range out there, even though she's spending a lot of time on the ball. Clearly, she's got an outside shot. Nicholas Sainsbury with another three-pointer. Now Renton. Can't get elevation on the shot, but he's going to go back in and scrap for the ball. Nichols just rips it out of the contest, misses the first time, surrounded by defenders, and draws a foul for two. Really well done. This is, with Melbourne, it's clear there's a bit of a gap in talent. They've got to be the hungry team. They've got to be the scrappy team. That's a great, great job from Nichols. So, Hensley Nichols will head back to the free throw line. She's over two from the field in this one as well, so still can't get a much needed first point. We wait for the second shot, and now she is on the board. Hopefully building some confidence, and Georges is checked back in, which is probably the last thing Melbourne Uni wanted to see, because they do have some issues under the hoop at the moment, both offensively and defensively. Be uh, interesting to see how UTS go without Jelena uh, out there. Sainsbury is making that a moot point at the moment. It's her <laughs> turn to catch fire. And that is two threes oh. in a row for her. There is our answer. Uh, we'll just go to the next shooter. Nicholas Sainsbury. He's got a good poker face. No smile. Just straight back on defense, hustling after hitting that shot. Nichols underneath for Melbourne Uni and blocks. Good day. Mascara stopping her in her tracks. Gabriella Van Dyke. Mashmet and all alone at the baseline is George's and I guess those are some of the problems that are becoming apparent as it blows out to 17 points. That's also a great reward for Georgia. She runs the court incredibly hard. Ellingworth. Now Paisano. 
He's trying to hit the long pass and does so. Ramakrishnan can't keep her scoring run going in the second quarter. Van Dyke with the rebound. Sainsbury's just been an ice cold killer in this one. And the long pass does not fall under the ring. First time for Moscara, but she gets to the second. And Melbourne Uni cannot get a stop at the moment. Well, they also they need to figure out who's playing their five and their four spot and make sure they get back because that's twice now they've been sprung over the top and uh, they can't, be, can't afford to be giving away those kind of baskets against a team that can shoot like UTS can. And this time Van Dyke commits the foul. Her second personal, I believe. So this is one issue we've seen from UTS in this quarter and a half of play. They give away a lot of fouls in there, but they haven't got a big team. They haven't got a lot of forwards. They've got to be... A bit more discipline, I would suspect. Two fouls a half, all right. Once you start getting towards three, that's a worry. I must apologise. The scorer turned the card around. It is three. Uh -oh. So that's uh, Van Dyke back on the bench, and we may not see a huge amount of her until third, maybe even the fourth quarter. Oh, I'll bring her back in the third, but we won't see her for a while, that's for sure. So Ellingworth hits a shot here, but it's still an 18-point deficit, and Jelena is back to cause trouble. And Paisano might try to simulate her model defending but no protest to the referee coach roberts was very much on the on the point of getting back there we can't be walking girls he said you've got to get back uts kicking it around the key sainsbury and again as you called it in the first quarter Roy, the little coach killer i don't think when you when you're hit by this much you can't get sloppy though can you you can't, and look, UTS, they want to set some standards for themselves. They're clearly a team with a lot of ability. They need to be right on top of their game. I must admit, they've come down here for this road double. They'll play Latrobe in their second game. So as everyone starts sorting each other out, Latrobe, who had an impressive win away at Sunshine Coast in their first game, we're starting to get a pecking order very slowly emerging here. I'm sure the Latrobe team will be watching on today, either live or at the replay of the stream, to get an idea of what their opponent's like under the ring here. Ainsworth just lost handle, no foul, and it's going to be UTS ball. And look, as people learn about this competition, players on campus, people that didn't know, we'll see some talent emerge that we didn't know was at some of these schools, I'd suspect. Well, the other thing is, I keep saying to my old university, Monash, where are you? <laughs> so I, I hope there's a magnet effect and other universities will be getting FOMO watching on here. As we see Jelena down to the baseline, trying to turn out and feed Sainsbury. And now the shot up from Mascara. Caught some rim, but didn't get the drop. That's a good bit of hustle from Mashmet to complete an offensive rebound. Sainsbury, Jelena, very quick step, veered back out. And was hoping for the drop and didn't get it. Now Ellingworth kicks it down low and that is good combination play from Melbourne University as it just tips in at the last. That's one of their best baskets so far today. Mashmet, Jelena. This one's for two. And this one's no good. But the offensive board goes the way of George's. And that is a problem for Melbourne Uni. 3.25 to go in this second quarter. Still an 18-point gap. I don't want to harp on on this, but this is going to be an issue for all the Victorian teams, I would suspect. Finishing quarters, finishing halves, playing when you're tired because they're just not used to it. And a little scoring streak going now for Ainsley Nichols. And that takes her up to five points. Didn't get on the board until this second quarter, but she's hit a couple of... Field goals in a row. Sainsbury feeds Mashman. And this time, oh, no, offhand, so they don't get the stop. Uh, they drew a foul, I reckon. And you are spot on indeed, Roy. So, foul goes against Tiani Ellingworth, her first personal. Mashmet throws it up to George's outside the arc. Now the inbound of Mashmet, just trying to keep possession under a bit of pressure. Sainsbury's been, oh, so good from outside. No one can stop her at the moment. She is deadly on the catch and shoot. Again, like with Chalina, they've got to get hands, feet, get right to her, give her no space. Nicholas Sainsbury, who might be committing the foul here. Chalina went flying. She was trying to buy a charge. Wasn't far off. But uh, Sainsbury's up to 12 points, all three pointers, and she's 4 of 5 
from the three-point arc. You mentioned her stoic face, not many expressions. She's a very technical player. She catches, she's very steady, and you can see that ball's coming out of the same spot, I reckon, every time. Very good to see. So, Melbourne Uni, a lot of trips to the free-throw line, but they're just not getting points in general play, and they're giving up a lot of easy buckets. And this will be what they have to work on. Take away those easy buckets. If a team's going to shoot like, the, like these UTS girls are, well, sometimes you've got to smile and take the, take the loss, but they can't be giving up the easy ones, the cheap ones. So one of two on that trip to the line, 45-27, with 2.24 to go in the second quarter. The attempt at, might have been a moving screen there from Mosquera. The referees let it go. Sainsbury. And just a little glance outside before she attacked the hoop. Couldn't get the rebound to fall. Now Paisano heard the shout from the corner and Ellingworth has well, hit the near side backboard this time. So one hit the support, one hit the backboard and that one can't hit anything Great either. Great hustle, Ellingsworth. So now a chance to reset the attack. Nine seconds, eight to go on the shot clock. Again, they've had three attempts at a three-pointer on the one phase and couldn't get any of them. All signs of fatigue, just taking that shot. And Jelena can't get the shot, but does get a foul. And Paisano, but well, I mean, that must be so frustrating for Melbourne Uni to see so many shots go up, and really, they weren't close. It's just a, it's a, re it's a reality of where they're at. They've just got to work and find ways past this UTS defence, and they've been very good too. We shouldn't uh, put all the blame here on Melbourne. UTS's defence is active, very aggressive. And Jelena at the line. Up to 12 points for the game. Been perfect from the stripe so far. That's her first miss. Three of four. And she goes and wins an offensive board for her trouble. That, that's great work. And now dumping it inside. And nearly the drop coming the way of George's. And that was nearly another easy bucket that we talked about. But the shot just didn't go. Melbourne Uni left the key free for the UTS player. Instead, with 1.19 to go, they have possession. Ooh. Bit of pushing off the ball there, but nothing too untoward. And the shot goes up from Nichols and can't fall. Sainsbury's played a lot of the game time in this second quarter. Up goes the shot from Mosquera, and this time, a rarity as UTS have no presence under the hoop. So an uncontested rebound for Paisano, but she throws the ball away. End to end stuff here at the end of the second quarter. Sainsbury, Mashmet, and... Great day, Nichols. Put that down as a block for Ainsley Nichols. 45 seconds to go, 15 on the shot clock. Sainsbury does the little devil horns. What is that going to mean? High screens. Georges and driving in. Thoughts on the foul call there? Yeah, it was, it was a little bit light on, but you know what? When you're running through with a hand at the end of a quarter, you're going to cop a foul more than, more than likely. As we have a look there at the block from Nichols before on Mashmet. So that was some good defending from Melbourne Uni this time. She'll get a lot more minutes if she's bringing that sort of hustle. So Nicholas Sainsbury hits the shot. She goes up to 13 points. First trip to the free throw line. And that's two for two. I need to check if she's studying acting here, Roy, because some of the facial expressions from Sainsbury are just so ice cool. Picture of concentration. Oh, Melbourne just got that done. They were in some trouble. Shot clock still a factor. 28 seconds to go in this second quarter. And now kicking it out, Ellingworth. And getting a bit more joy from the right side. Had not been too good on the left, but this time the two-pointer goes in. Melbourne Uni trying to finish the half with a bucket. They get back within 20. Six seconds to go. Mashmet's got a hustle. Big Good Euro day, step, and the ball turned over, and looking up at the clock, Ellingworth says, we will take that to half time. It has not been a great half from Melbourne Uni, but if there is some good news, they only scored 33 points total last week. They did get 29 in the half, and some of the fans here and players coming up in this afternoon's men's match show their appreciation. So 48-29, Roy Ward, your thoughts on the first half? UTS has got a lot of quality. Their shooters have been really on song here. Chalina, Salisbury, they've got, they got a lot of talent going. Melbourne's fighting. I like the way they're ca carrying on. Nichols has been great in there with her hustle. Allingworth has been tireless, but they've got, got to pick it up offensively. So for the leaders, UTS. 
Nicholas Sainsbury is up to 14 points, four of seven from the field, but impressively, four of five from three-point range. So the uh, Bachelor of Sport and Exercise Management, not of acting, but maybe one to think about for the future, uh, she is the high score for all comers in this game. Only other player in double figures is Maya Jelena, three of six from the field and three of four from three-point range. But the three-pointer went away. She uh, shot three of them in the first quarter to get it started. Just the one shot from outside the arc since then. Be an interesting little case study to see from here in this game and later in the week whether she keeps getting that shot or if all the teams are going to look at that start and uh, have their scout ready to go from the start. And other point scorers for UTS Van Dyke with eight, Georges with six, and four from Oscara, two each from Mashmed and Yeomans. And looking at some of the other numbers that matter, Georges uh, leads all comers with seven, sorry, with eight total rebounds, three assists each for Mashmed, Van Dyke and Sainsbury. So anything else to read into some of those numbers? Oh, and probably the, the one player in big foul trouble as well is Van Dyke with three personal fouls. No one else from UTS has more than one. Big work on for UTS. Keep out of foul trouble. There's no need to give away cheap ones, particularly if you're Van Dyke and Georges, because they're going to have a lot of work this game and this season. Melbourne, just find a way to get inside. Find a way to get some passes together and beat the sort of pressure defence they're copying, because they looked all right when they get close in. So looking at the point leaders for Melbourne Uni. A bit more of an even spread. Seven each for Renton and Ellingworth. They're both two for six from the field. Nichols has five. She's two for seven. Foster has four points, both coming in that second quarter. Hamza, just the one three-pointer. One for one. Hasn't taken any other shots. Miller, just the one point from the trip to the free throw line. And Paisano, one for four, two points. And all of those shooting numbers uh, really tell a story of just not being able to hit their shots. And I guess the, the rebounds and some of the other factors wouldn't be as big a problem if they were hitting the first shot that they choose. It's always the way. If we if we ended up look at, looking at some shot charts, looking at some uh, the the set, the catches that Melbourne's got, it'll be all outside rush stuff. That's what they're missing most. So they need to get, as I say, closer in and just have a little bit of poise. And it's hard to have early in the season when you're still feeling everyone out, but this is going to be crucial to them, keeping these margins far closer than, than this one. And uh, the only player in foul trouble is Ellingworth with three. Assist leader uh, is currently Paisano with three. So before we take a quick break uh, during this halftime interval, Melbourne University, our hosts today, are celebrating 150 years of InterVarsity sport. 2020 marked the 150th anniversary of InterVarsity sport in Australia, with the University of Melbourne and Sydney University competing against each other in rowing and cricket in 1870. The Melbourne players are wearing a special badge on their uniform to commemorate the anniversary today. COVID may have prevented us from getting together to celebrate the 150th anniversary of InterVarsity sport last year, but Melbourne University does have some special celebrations in store this year to mark the occasion. The Australian Boat Race, uh, very much uh, in context, not an uh, analogy. The Australian Boat Race between Melbourne and Sydney will be held on Saturday the 23rd of October. A special anniversary cricket game between Melbourne and Sydney will be held in October as well. Plans are also underway for a gala event in the second half of 2021. More details will be announced soon, so make sure you check out the Melbourne University website and social pages. We're going to take a quick breather here at halftime. Stay with us on live coverage of the University Basketball League. We're at halftime. UTS leads Melbourne 48 to 29. Can't use the screen from outside. This would be two for two. Yeah, the, the defense has to adjust from Melbourne. They sat off uh, Jelena there, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a recipe for disaster. Starting community. The perimeter, they're not comfy out there. Georges, top of the key. Jelena, again, just takes it, shoots it, drains it, and that is three range attempts from her. Not close. By contrast, UTS are good from three. Nicholas Sainsbury knocks it down. She's also studying sport and exercise man scoring runs and some stops here to stay in touch. Foster, now Renton, and that one is three, and that will get it back to a 10-point game, 30 points to 20, although Mosquera has been left on the arc. And now the inbound of Mashmet, just trying to keep possession under a bit of pressure. Sainsbury's been, oh, so good from outside. No one can stop her at the moment. She's deadly on the catch and shoot. Again, like... And stuff here at the end of the second quarter. Sainsbury, Mashmet, and... Great D, Nichols. Put that down. And now kicking it out, Ellingworth. And getting a bit more joy from the right side. 
Had not been too good on the left, but this time... The can't use the screen from outside. This would be two for two. Yeah, the, the defence has to adjust from Melbourne. They sat off uh, Chalina there, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a recipe for disaster. Studying community. the perimeter, they're not comfy out there. Georges, top of the key. Jelena again, just takes it, shoots it, drains it, and that is three range attempts from her. Not close. By contrast, UTS are good from three. Nicholas Sainsbury knocks it down. She's also studying sport and exercise management, scoring runs and some stops here to stay in touch. Foster, now Renton, and that one is three, and that will get it back to a 10-point game, 30 points to 20, although Mosquera's been left at the arc. Now the inbound of Mashmet, just trying to keep possession under a bit of pressure. Sainsbury's been, oh, so good from outside. No one can stop her at the moment. She's deadly on the catch and shoot. Again, like... And stuff here at the end of the second quarter. Sainsbury, Mashmet, and... Great D, Nichols. Put that down. And now kicking it out, Ellingworth. And getting a bit more joy from the right side. Had not been too good on the left, but this time... The can't use the screen from outside. This would be two for two. Yeah, the, the defense has to adjust from Melbourne. They sat off uh, Chalina there, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a recipe for disaster. Studying community. The perimeter, they're not comfy out there. Georges, top of the key. Jelena, again, just takes it, shoots it, drains it, and that is three range attempts from her. Not close. By contrast, UTS are good from three. Nicholas Sainsbury knocks it down. She's also studying sport and exercise management, scoring runs and some stops here to stay in touch. Foster, now Renton, and that one is three, and that will get it back to a 10-point game, 30 points to 20, although mosquera has been left at the arc. And now the inbound of Mashmet, just trying to keep possession under a bit of pressure. Sainsbury's been, oh, so good from outside. No one can stop her at the moment. She's deadly on the catch and shoot. Again, like... And stuff here at the end of the second quarter. Sainsbury, Mashmet, and... Great D, Nichols. Put that down. And now kicking it out, Ellingworth. And getting a bit more joy from the right side. Had not been too good on the left, but this time... The can't use the screen from outside. This would be two for two. Yeah, the, the defense has to adjust from Melbourne. They sat off uh, Chalina there, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a recipe for disaster. Studying community. The perimeter, they're not comfy out there. Georges, top of the key. Jelena, again, just takes it, shoots it, drains it, and that is three range attempts from her. Not close. By contrast, UTS are good from three. Nicholas Sainsbury knocks it down. She's also studying sport and exercise management, scoring runs and some stops here to stay in touch. Foster, now Renton, and that one is three, and that will get it back to a 10-point game, 30 points to 20, although Mosquera's been left at the arc. And now the inbound of Mashmet, just trying to keep possession under a bit of pressure. Sainsbury's been, oh, so good from outside. No one can stop her at the moment. She's deadly on the catch and shoot. Again, seconds to go on this halftime interval. Welcome back. Teo Pelizzari and Roy Ward with you for the University Basketball League. Stick around. The men's uh, match is coming up later today as well from 3.30pm and the UTS team is still actually sitting courtside with us at the moment watching on as the visitors the University of Technology Sydney have bought, built a 48-29 lead on the back of 14 points from Nicholas Sainsbury and 12 points from Mayor Jelena and Roy, the main thing we've been impressed with is just what good shooting we've had from the visitors today. Yeah, and this will be a nice little test for for uh, for the Melbourne Uni team. Can they adjust? Can they get some feet and uh, right in front of these girls from UTS? Otherwise, we're going to see a lot more swishes come this second half. The other question will be, how much can UTS sustain the intensity? We've seen so many of their players check in off the bench, really, 
almost with a point to prove and just with, with real aggression. And it's been that sort of relentless replacement of players that have come in with attitude and with a bit of speed. And Melbourne Uni just haven't had the answers and they haven't had the same boost coming off their bench. That's a good sign for UDS. It's something for Melbourne to develop. You know, players have to find roles and find ways they can contribute. Hamza starts the third quarter in perfect style with a big three, and she is two for two from the arc. So maybe we'll see her used a bit more because she's come in and got Melbourne Uni off to an ideal start, cutting this gap back to 16 points at the start of the third quarter. Sainsbury, one of the stars of the game so far, is going to hope for three. It's going to hurt her shooting percentage a little bit as Paisano comes away with the ball. Melbourne Uni would love consecutive buckets out of the halftime break. Hamza is going to go to the hoop this time and draw the foul. And this is what I mean about getting getting out to the shooter. You see the UTS girls have adjusted automatically. Problem is Sainsbury overcommitted there and Hamza made a great little read, got underneath her. Now she's got two shots. So Leia Hamza didn't play the first game against VU. And she knocks down her first three-pointer on the trip to the line. Hamza, who is studying a Bachelor of Arts, and puts that one in too. So she's two for two from the line, and that brings us back to 34-48, first minute of the third quarter. Jelena. Over to Sainsbury. And now shooting from outside is Georges. Bit of a rush shot there, but, you know, take your shot. So, UTS yet to Good screen. hit a bucket in this third quarter, and that shot would not have counted as the hands foul. Oh, what's Side the call? Line. Sideline, my apologies. Once again, the old Coach Keller on the sideline there, and right in front of Coach Roberts as well. So, Melbourne Uni give up possession, mash bet. Jelena, UTS looking to switch back on. Some physical work going on in the key as Mosquera went charging through. Mashmet, three on the shot clock. Mosquera gets the shot up. Offensive board comes down with UTS. And so they get 15 more seconds to try something here. Mashmet. And... That might have been an attempted pass in under the key rather than a shot. And so Melbourne Uni showing some defensive sturdiness here in the third quarter. Foster can continue the good run. That one is an air ball. And now in transition, Melbourne Uni are going to have to scramble back here. Time for Jelena to measure the three. And that one rims out. And importantly, Foster gets the big defensive board. So this is the worst runner offensively that the uh, UTS girls have had this game. And we've got to see what adjustments can they make here to get themselves back on track. They haven't added to their halftime score. Foster underneath. Cannot get the drop. Pulls in the offensive board hard against the baseline and keeps possession in Melbourne Uni hands. Yeah, very good work from Melbourne. I, I like the way Foster's just getting her body in there. She's the biggest on the court. It's not always the easiest job when you are the biggest and you've got people coming from underneath, but she's getting in and making a difference. And Hamza, the catalyst, maybe doesn't have the legs to play sustained minutes, but she's been Great good play. when uh, she's been out there. Unfortunately for Melbourne Uni, they can't get that shot to fall. Jelena down the other end. Oh, clean pick. And even though it's UTS ball at the baseline, Paisano will be very happy with how she stripped that one away. She read her like a book, as they say. Got right underneath, perfect steal. And great look at the camera angle there, under the rim as well. Lovely pass. They just can't get a shot to drop at the moment, UTS. It's like they've done a complete 180 from the first half. Welcome to first game of the season. We got all the jitters and the little things we expect at the start of the game, at the start of the second half. I time for them to adjust. I wonder if they were thinking how easy is basketball at half time because this is a totally different looking team. Melbourne Uni, unfortunately for them, don't look completely different because they're still not knocking down shots. And a lot of these players won't be used to travelling on game day like they have today, flying, all these little differences. Maybe it's all just coming to roost a little bit now. Mashmet turns onto her right side. Georges, mid-range two. And... Even though she was doing most of her work right down under the ring in the key in the first half, 
has been willing to take some outside shots here and knocks that one down. She'll be dangerous in this league if she's hitting that shot consistently while also rebounding at the rate she is. Miller, desperate for a three-pointer to drop, and it's going to roll onto the top of the backboard and stay alive for Melbourne Uni. And the follow-up goes in. Tiani Ellingworth got it. Yeah, good. gets two. We've got a timeout. And Christian Jolina, the UTS coach, has seen enough as we have another look at the replay here. Not often you see a passage of play where the ball dances along the top of the backboard and still ends up hitting the, the bottom of the net. oldest adage of all, you've got to get and play to the whistle. The referees did not see it go behind that backboard, so they said keep playing. UTS girls got distracted. And real smart work from Coach Jolina there just to say, hey, come and have a chat, pull your heads back in, because they've had a rough start. And they would be expecting to have this margin out further. They don't now. So they've only scored the two points in this third quarter, and it's back to 14 with 6.32 to go. We're taking a look at the UTS huddle here. Melbourne Uni, they're still not getting as many shots to drop as they would like. They really could have punished them and closed this gap a lot more. Yeah, and it's pretty clear. They're not going to be a very cohesive offensive team for a little while, but they have come along better in this half, and they can feed off their defence. If they can keep this defence up, or at least keep the UTS to a basket every three plays instead of every second play, they'll be able to get more offense from that. But it's just a, this is a feeling out process. This is, youth, this is young people's basketball, so to speak. College basketball, there's going to be a lot of adjustments and little feeling out periods. You make a good point that if this university league is going to grow, maybe un more universities get involved. This is the sort of thing that we can get used to. Big differences in performance game to game, quarter to quarter, but also watch the development happen in front of our eyes. Absolutely, and we've seen development in this in this game for, with the way Melbourne's changed their defence and improved it. That's it. They'll have to do a lot more of that. Nashman trying to find a gap where there was none. And Melbourne Uni getting more takeaways now. Paisano, Miller, still can't get a three-pointer to drop. That one hitting the near side ring. So just didn't get the elevation on it. Nashman not perturbed by that last turnover. It's going to go to work again. Sainsbury. We haven't seen her put a shot up in this third quarter. Yeah, that's exactly what they wanted. Pick and roll, get Georges going to the basket. She was open for probably a second and a half before she got the ball there. That's a great read from UTS, and Melbourne's got to do better on that one. Georges hits double figures. And there's, in this sort of game, there's a nice scoring uh, game for Georges there if she wants it. She can get around the basket, get a nice couple of cheap baskets. Two shots for Ellingworth on that passage of play. Couldn't get either of them to drop. Now Mashmet. Good work. Georges. We've seen both outside and inside shooting from her, but she's going to leave it for Jelena here. Good and defense. Turns into trouble. Ball is knocked out of her hands. Great defense from Ellingworth around there. Miller at the baseline. Kicks it back out. Paisano. And Ellingworth into Foster, who draws the foul and... George is starting to look a bit fatigued after some fast breaks up and down the court. Commits the foul here. We, uh, we don't get to see all sort of track, tracking data and so forth here, but I would suggest she's run the most full court sprints in this game. She's gone end to end at a really impressive rate, but there's a payback for that when you tie yourself out, and Van Dyke's foul trouble won't have helped that either. That's the second personal for George's. Foster is at the free throw line for the first time and misses on this occasion. Four points in the first half, but only two for six from the field. She's giving them a lot inside. She's giving them a target that they've sorely lacked in the, in the earlier, earlier contest. And can't score either. And a hard-earned defensive rebound for Georges. And she hands off to Marshmet. Now back to Georges. Mosquera. Jolino in low and two more under the ring. And Georges continues to work the paint very effectively. Shalina is a quality player too. That pass from her was expert. It really hit a hit her player right in the hands and all she had to do was put it in. Now Ellingworth goes up. It's lost her range. It's a couple of misses in a row now. Mashbet, always full of energy. That killer sideline once again. <laughs> and even though Maya looks down at the sideline, I think the UTS Men's players warranted it before she even caught the ball. I heard the, the shout go down there, but she didn't heed the warning. Look, so Melbourne, U Melbourne Uni's court has always ha had a little difficulty because there's the, I think, I think it's a volleyball or a netball line that sits really close to the basketball line. Different colours, but you can get confused easy. So with 4.23 to go, 
Margin still hanging at 18 points. Miller. Brenton will take the three. That one comes up short. And Van Dyke back on. First time we've seen her in this third quarter after getting into foul trouble. Wide open three-pointer for Jelena. That one hits the ring on the near side and Ramakrishnan comes away with the ball. Missing has become contagious in this third quarter. Grubasic on for Melbourne Uni. Fatigue's uh, dug in for both teams as well. Can they choose the right shot here, Melbourne Uni? Keep trying to chip away at the deficit. Ramakrishnan fakes out one. Oh, need to know the clock. One on the shot clock. It gets up in time. No, referee whistled. So Paisano was trying to beat the buzzer but couldn't do so and the shot clock expired. That was a, a split second call. I thought she actually might have got that out of the hand in time. But we pay the black and white fellas to make that call and they've made it. Of course, even though today's game is being filmed there, not going to come over and review the footage. <laughs> Mashman, little head fake, and then drives to the hoop. Couldn't get the shot to fall, but she will go to the line for two. Mashman has been great at setting up her teammates in this in this passage of play where they haven't been very good offensively. She's been settling them down, calling a few of those pick and rolls and high catches, and it's gotten them baskets. Really impressed with her headiness in this second half. Now she goes to line for two. Jessica Mashmet studying business at UTS. Just the two points. One for four from the field. And that is success for the first time with her first free throw of the game. And she's two for two. So it gets a bit of reward for that drive. And now full court press causing some real headaches for Melbourne Uni here. Great, a great extra sprint from Mashman there to get her hand in and get a deflection after having those foul shots. Um, all these little things, it's going to matter for a team like UTS that relies on energy and, and playing fast. So the gap's 20. Melbourne Uni having some troubles inbounding, but this time they get through the full court press. 3.15 to go in the third quarter. Renton did hit one three-pointer earlier in the term. Paisano... Kicks it back out. Renton's going to try again with a hand in the face. And the defensive hustle was enough to put her off. It'll be a jump ball down at the baseline. And it means that UTS will take over possession. Might have heard Mashman shout doubles there. She brought the ball down the court. And then they've adjusted because uh, Melbourne's jumped into a zone. And it's uh, sadly... Not worked out. Loose handling and an easy layup. Two much needed points for Paisano. And Yeomans won't be happy about getting caught there. And this is all that learning on the fly here. Melbourne switched defences. Sydney were, UTS were a little bit slow in making that adjustment. Now Mashmet decided against a three-pointer being heavily guarded. Van Dyke. And if there's a player out there with a one-track mind, it is Jade Yeomans. As soon as she gets the ball, it is just go to the hoop every time. And this time... She gets two shots. Well, last time she went to the foul line, coach subbed her out, so obviously she's realised that she's got to get efficiency for her minutes there. And uh, I love that. You know, in this sort of zone defence where they're coming out a little more on the side, she's attacked them down the middle, and we've seen her at the foul line now. And we saw there Jordan Grubasic was not happy with the call. It's still a foul. As this free throw goes in. So, Jane Yeomans, limited minutes today, but she's... Three for three from the free throw line. Make that four for four. So very good from the stripe. And are they subbing her out again? No, they've, uh, they must have had a sub tucked in just for after that after that free throw. So she, survi she survives on the court this time. We get to see a bit more of her in these last two minutes, 22. But there will be a timeout first. And the gap remains Melbourne. 20 points, 58 to 38. Yeah, look, this is, this is much better from Melbourne this second half. Their defence has been far more cohesive. They've asked some big questions of UTS. And so far, UTS haven't had all the answers. And uh, that's a positive. That's a real positive for them to build on. Uh, i got to say also, Ellings Ellingworth is out to 10 rebounds. And I hadn't realised that until now. That is a hell of an effort for someone who's by far the tallest or most rangiest player on this court today. This quarter is only one point difference. UTS winning it 10 points to 9. And... I think we went through a bit of this last week for Melbourne Uni. They were trying to win a quarter off VU, not to leave completely empty-handed. So 
they'll be hoping that in the last 223 of this quarter they can at least get a nudge in front there. And these are all the little tests you need to pass as a team. Can we close out quarters? Can we win some quarters when we're struggling? I think uh, I would be surprised if UCS, if they'll be telling their players too, hey, we don't want to lose, we don't want to lose this quarter when we're up 20. We want to have four quarters of dominance. I think um, some corrections coming from them as well. There are some of the players we're going to see later this afternoon. UTS travelling party down in Melbourne for a road double. We'll also be taking on Latrobe. And so, so they're not, not, not setting up the full port court press this time. What's we were both looking where we had to see. Oh, I think it's more about just getting their defence settled down. So out of a timeout, you know there's no surprise in the press, so may as well just go. Ramakrishnan accepts the invitation for three. You can just see her thinking, well, oh, they're not coming out for me, so yes, I will take the shot. Uh, Coach Chalina was not happy there. Someone broke down and missed, on, missed uh, the shooter there. And now Mosquera trying to answer in kind. No one misses the ring, and Grubicic grabs the rebound underneath. Needs one of the guards to take over. And now Renton for three, and... Well, uh -oh. Ellingworth, break. the one-handed attempt, foul. and <laughs> centre court. That's a foul by Renton, and in, it's her second. In the uh, the olden days of the early 2000s, we'd call that a European foul or a professional foul. She's just stuck her body in. Usually that's an unsportsmanlike, uh, but in this case she sold it just enough that she's avoided getting that uh, more stricter call. Now Yeomans, as the ball goes around the key, Van Dyke behind the back, and they lost sight on the shot clock. 17 points, still the gap. Is it, do the referees look for anything in particular then if they're trying to determine between regular foul or unsportsman like, or is it if just it, a, a consequences thing as well? It's more if you go and deliberately try and stop a fast break, as our uh, number six did there, there, that's usually a straight up unsportsman like, but the referees took pity on her. Ramakrishnan this time being a bit more closely guarded. In the NBL this season, we've seen that called very, very closely as an unsportsmanlike foul. Just a, hence why the UTS fellas all screamed out unsportsmanlike as it happened. Down at the low post, Mosquera loses out. Renton having a good little run. Paisano stops and props. Ramakrishnan oh, couldn't get the layup to go. 56 seconds to go in this third quarter. Sainsbury. And now Van Dyke with that very left footed, very left handed, I should say, shooting style. Decides against it here. Sainsbury is good. And again, the ice cold outside shooter. She didn't even catch it properly, and she still got that release perfect. She's a, she's a very, very good shooter. Nicholas Sainsbury now shouting from the base of the key up to the defense, and they answer the call and get the stop. Georges kicks it down low. Yeomans back uh -oh. out. Sainsbury didn't want to go up again. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Sainsbury just dishes off. Shot clock a mood point here. It's all about the game clock at the Swing end of the back. third. The men are counting it down. Yeomans goes up and will go to the line. And given she's been a perfect four for four from the stripe, you know, I think give the assist to the men's team there being the, uh, the countdown clock for us. They, uh, they've been exceptional in that in that area, but uh, Yeomans sold it really well. She went in hard, threw her body in, said, referee, give me a call, and uh, she got it just there. And she's five for five from the three-point line. The bad news for Melbourne Uni is this might end up costing them the quarter. Yep, two for two. So it's 14-12 this quarter. So if they can get a shot up here, they might break even. I don't think she knows. One second to go, yeah. and... The clock expires, and I think you might have been right there, Roy. So, Melbourne Uni better in that quarter, but UTS still got it, 14-12, meaning they extend their halftime lead out to 20 at three-quarter time. In fact, 22, 63-41. So, this one is heading in the visitors' direction, but your thoughts on a more competitive third quarter? Really positive signs for Melbourne to get that defence better, to find ways to trouble UTS, to make those corrections on the fly. Um, but little things that are going to be big things going forward. They've got to be screaming out from the bench and telling Paisano, you've got three seconds. They've got to be communicating. 
And uh, we saw the UTS men on the sideline here helping out their girls. The bench from Melbourne's got to do that for their teammates. They've got to be calling out. Well, they've lost the sixth man for the last quarter, <laughs> UTS, because the men have got to go and get changed and get ready to play their match, which is coming up in just under an hour. So make sure if you're watching this on the Melbourne University Sport or the UTS Facebook pages or Sportscast Australia, stick around for that. Still got one quarter to go here. Some of the stat leaders, no, no real fundamental changes. Nicholas Sainsbury is still the high score, five of seven from three, and she has 17 points. Jelena and George's both at 12 points now, and you spoke about the uh, inside work of George's in the key, but she showed that she's got a mid-range jumper as well in that quarter. And the trick going forward for any of the players in this competition is, can you produce something consistently, night in, night out, with where you're scoring from? Now, some players like a Salisbury, she knows where she's, she knows she can shoot. So as we take a look at some of the presenting partners of the UBL, Sportscast Australia, Clutch, Scape and All Sports Travel. It's great post-COVID to have a National League back up and going at this level. It's credit to the seven universities and, of course, all the presenting partners of the UBL to make this competition happen. And as I said during play, Roy, hopefully it grows from here. Hopefully other universities are watching on and want to get involved. And we were actually talking at halftime about, you know, where's the ACT? Where's Canberra? A lot of good universities there. As a University of Canberra graduate, I would very much love to see them involved. Um, although their WNBL commitment's quite sizable, so time will tell if we see a ANU or, or University of Canberra join. But look, I think the big thing going forward in the seasons ahead will be can we get some players come out of this league into a WNBL development spot, into an NBL development spot, because that is the next step for anyone who's outside the national leagues. And I think, of course, the, the easy comparison to make is, of course, with college ball, but university sport, nowhere near as big a point of pride or an interest as the US college system, regardless of the sport, but you've got to start somewhere. And I think that's why this initiative could have a bit of potential. That three-pointer does not have potential, though, as it rims out for Miller. Well, it's a potential rebound, that's what that was. But I think... Uh Really interested to see how, how UTS go here. Are they just going to attack this zone or are they going to find a few passes? In underneath, Ellingworth is careful not to commit a travel. And we're getting to see Hamza start of the final quarter. Only got a couple of minutes at the start of the third as well. Miller finally gets one to go. And you can see it meant a bit to her as well. She, got... she shoots with such regularity that she obviously is someone who can make a basket. She's not someone just throwing it up for the fun of it. I think she's just had a rough day. Still a long quarter here for her to go. Good call. Um, we've got a foul here. If there's one thing that is credit to Melbourne Uni, they have not committed that many fouls today. Certainly UTS by contrast have sent Melbourne Uni to the line quite a few times on some of their drives. And this is going to be something that's a positive, but I think in that first quarter Melbourne just couldn't get close enough to them to actually make that many fouls. I think the shots were Shots were flying up from UTS back then, but they've done better. Sainsbury uh -oh. is still red hot from three. This is quite the display from her. First player up to 20 points for the game. And Hamza tries to answer in kind, and we're exchanging three-pointers here at the start of the last quarter. And that brings the gap back within 20 points. Bigger uh, issue for both teams here is identifying. We saw Hamza come out harder than to Sainsbury. They've got a note. See, they haven't read here, and they're going to play. Oh, well, it's a rare miss from outside the arc. She was due. I was, I was in agreement with you. I thought here's three more, but not to be. Hamza is trying to score her second in a row, and that's got the Melbourne Uni bench up because Leah Hamza has consecutive threes. You know, the mark is only 16 points now. This is actually with a few more threes coming into range again. The question is, is she going to be able to sustain the minutes out there? Van Dyke is up. Big defensive board. Nichols sends it to Paisano. Can Melbourne Uni get the hot hand going again? Hamza. This time, Miller hits the baseline and heard the shout from outside the key. Three ball! Melbourne Uni. Time out again. And the timeout is taken by UTS, but Tiani Ellingworth knocks down the three, so we've seen four three pointers in this quarter. One for Miller, one for Ellingworth, and two for Hamza. And it is back to 13 points with 7.42 to go. And safe to say, Roy, this is what both the contract test and the neutrals needed. And this is, this is what Melbourne needed. They needed to show that they're worthy of being here, that they're capable of being here. They're not just making up numbers. 
And uh, this is a team, UTS, they're in their first game still. We, we sort of forgot that because they started so hot. But now we're seeing the legs get heavy. We're seeing a few things not fall their way. Really a good time out from coach. I think it'll be a good, good opportunity for them to collect themselves, probably bring back in a few of their starters. One thing I would point out is that the... Uh, the, the main players have played 29, 30 minutes apiece so far, and we've only gone through 33 minutes of the game. So they have not sat much. They have not rotated all that much, and it hopefully, it will, not hopefully, this could hurt them towards the end. You, ma you make a great point, because we have not seen Javiera Loyola, who you just saw on the bench, in that timeout come on. We haven't seen Carla Manansala get any minutes either. So I guess UTS are mindful that they're playing a road double, but... If there were any plans to empty the bench and give some of the fringe players minutes, this little rally from Melbourne Uni has got them having other ideas. And look, this is up to UTS to take care of their teammates here, push this margin back out. But we may see their legs get a bit heavy. We may see them come back to the field a bit. There is a lot of time left in this game. That's what's got to be noted by UTS here. All of a sudden, an important possession. Jelena, now Van Dyke, Sainsbury, dumps it in, but straight back out. Some of the Melbourne Uni fans have found... Thunder sticks to cause a bit of tension in the defending uh -oh. here. Sainsbury up for three and does not get it. And Ellingworth with the board. And now Miller is going to dash down the court. Melbourne Uni playing with real belief for the first time in this game. Kicked out. Paisano. And now Ramakrishnan has checked in. Ellingworth drew the contact. And eventually the foul was given. The basket will not count. And that goes against Hannah Georges. So they're, they're playing an aggressive zone defense now, Melbourne. They're, they're out on the perimeter, really pushing UTS. And they're not comfortable with that right now. They need to get some passes inside. Screen from Ellingworth opened up just a half second of space. Now down at the baseline, and one! Akshaya Ramakrishnan will go to the line for the three-point play, and this is as close as it's been since the first quarter. Ramakrishnan may not, is not the biggest by far. She's one of the smallest out there, but she is fearless. She goes to that hoop with intent. She shoots with intent, and it's been a, a real big sort of boost for this Melbourne side to have that sort of punch coming into the game. And a couple of fouls in quick succession means Georges is up to three personal. Offensive board. Ellingworth puts it back in. Make it a four-point play, and all of a sudden, we are almost back down. In fact, we are back down to double figures. It's just a nine-point game with 6.46 to go. And this rally from Melbourne Uni is becoming legit. Van Dyke, Sainsbury. And now Sainsbury's open, 4-3, and is on a missing streak now. After she couldn't miss in the first three quarters, her radar's abandoned her at the worst time. By contrast, no, Miller can't get the drop. That would have been her second three-pointer of the last. Melbourne Uni now starting to pose a real threat to UTS. UTS have not been in the key for four or five plays. They've got to find something inside. Another outside shot, Van Dyke. Oh, couldn't have got much closer. And almost willed out after it rattled around the rim. As we take another look at the replay here of a very hotly contested defensive rebound. And Mashmet comes back in, and she's been a, a source of energy and aggression for UTS, and they need her right now to step up. She's also been the one setting out their offense and calling him into line, so they've desperately missed her while she's been having a rest. Ramakrishnan throws it up. And it was a hopeful shot. It wasn't balanced as it left the hand. And so the defensive rebound comes away with UTS. And Mashmet kicks it to Jelena. Intercepted. Great play, Ellingworth, to get a hand in and force the turnover. Gee, Ellingworth has been tireless in this game. She's been inspiration for her team. And now Nichols grabbed a big offensive rebound. And Jelena might be protesting as we see the source of some of the noise. The thunder sticks starting to make some sounds. And for the first time, we're really starting to see the, as you mentioned, the stoic faces of UTS starting to break, Roy. There's some frustration. There's some concern in the team. Uh, adversity's turned up and they weren't expecting to see it today um, but look this is a good test for them they've got a lot of talent a lot of lot of ability on this team time for them to get their get their chins up and figure it out Melbourne Uni would love a bucket here just to draw that little bit closer Ellingworth with that moon ball style and she has not been good from outside today and UTS fast break down the yeah. other end Jelena can't get the shot to fall Ellingworth looks up 
Does the quick head check of who's where on the court. Really well done. And now Miller for three. Oh. Rims out, and Ramakrishnan was always going to be disadvantaged going up against the taller Jelena for the rebound. Georges. And yeah, very good work. Mashment, get them get back together and sort something out. Oh, Jelena blocked. Nichols, and then caught in a one-on-two trap. And a foul call. The, the referee's whistle is going to come to the rescue of Melbourne Uni because it looked for all money like... Ellingworth had run herself into a trap there from the UTS defence. And they bring Leah Hamja back on Melbourne Uni. We know that she's been good from three. 4.52 to go, nine-point game. Coach Roberts has done a good job at rotating his players in the second half. They've used a lot of energy, but he's kept shuffling them in and out. Mashmet Smart sticking to Hamza. Does not want her to be left open outside the arc. And another foul, and they're starting to rack up here for UTS and... This time it's Jelena who commits the offence. and That's her third, I think. Indeed it is. So they're in the bonus already. Melbourne Uni going to the line through Miller. And she hits the first. Back so, to eight points. So we've talked about how uh, Melbourne had such a hard start last week, but that's invaluable for them right now because they've got way more cohesion than... The new test is showing when the pressure is building up in this game. Oh, I'm, I must admit, I didn't see this coming. I'm shocked that UTS have started to get scrappy. They've started to turn the ball over. And Melbourne are playing with some real belief. Georges can't get the drop. And another thing that's improved immensely is Melbourne's rebounding. Nichols comes away with the ball here. I've got to say, Nichols has been a huge part of securing that key way for them, for ha Melbourne. Hamja, that one, was always drifting left and rimmed out. Mashmet, fast break. And Hamza really well commits the foul. Hopeful shot went up from Mashmet, but Hamza, who had, of course, plenty of fouls to give, having only played limited minutes. 4.10 to go, timeout. Roy, well, we've got ourselves a game, and I'm excited because I didn't think this match was heading in this direction. Again, this is one of the, the joys, the beauties of whether it's collegiate basketball or under-20s basketball, development leagues where players are learning and players have massive ebbs and flows. And we've seen it the first half. UTS were flying. Melbourne Uni's come home with a flurry here. And it's also, it's, it's reward for them for learning, for finding, finding a defence that works, finding players who work in position. Nichols has been brilliant for them. Ellingworth, Tyler, all these players who have just given them energy, that's let them get back into this contest. It was 22 points at one stage. Now we're back to seven. And you've talked about the number of minutes that the key players for UTS have played. Do you think there's any regret that they didn't when the game was really going their way, they didn't sit a couple more, get Man and Sala in, get Javiera Loyola in, and just even for a minute or two for some of these key players that are now starting to fray at the edges. Look, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in coaching. You are you've only he's only got nine players in the lineup. Obviously he's confident with the group he's got, and it's the first game, so fatigue shouldn't be there to as big a factor as we'll see later on. But we are seeing him tire a bit um, playing the pressure game they play. They've got to find some more role players, find some players who can fill out some minutes in later matches. Even the body language, out of this timeout, they're all still talking to each other with uh, great intensity, UTS. They do oh. not want to let this one slip. No, and they've got some girls who clearly have some experience at whether it's youth league level in New South Wales. They've played some decent standards. I think the big question is, can they get themselves some shots in the key? Melbourne has bustled them out of the key in this second half. So Mash met at the line for some steadying points, and she hits the first. Jessica Mash met up to five for the game, but she's three for three from the free throw line, crucially. I felt like she had more than that, but I think it's just the quality of shooting she's shown. So she hits both, and that gets the gap back out to nine points. They're playing a zone now. This is going to surprise Melbourne. One, a 1-3-1, one, one, I think they're playing. And so as they... Guard the arc. Melbourne Uni kicking it around the outside. Hums are caught into two on one. Yep. And the foul is called, and the UTS bench not happy about it. But Hamza, who for all money looked like she was trapped, has the referee's whistle come to her aid. She was one of the one of the players threw her hand in quickly and swiped at the ball, and that's the foul. You just can't do it. Discipline early on, even though winning by 20, they're giving away fouls. 
we're seeing them still do it. It's a, it's a trait they need to knock out of their game because uh, they're a far better side when the ball's live in play, not when it's stopped up and we're shooting foul shots. That free throw bounced around. This one does too and does not fall. So it's eight points. Hums are one for two on that trip to the line. Mashmet trying to hurry Melbourne Uni down the court, but Jelena has to slow things down. It allows the defence to settle in through the hands, but Jelena made it work. Lux of fortune. Sainsbury, head fake, drives to the hoop and Good gets her own offensive board. Now Mashbent, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Time to steady and work it around the key. Now the shot clock's an issue. Mashbent, three to go on the shot clock and she's blocked from underneath. They Good have second. two seconds to go on the shot clock though. Brubazic, as we see the replay here. There's a bit of a push underneath there. They got, they got lucky, Melbourne. Got the hand in to the referee's liking. Two seconds then, it's a catch and shoot situation. And it doesn't fall, but they get the offensive board. And Van Dyke tried to scoop from underneath, couldn't do so. And eventually, Melbourne Uni get the stop, but gee, they had to work for it. We're down to 3.05 to go. That was one where, uh, where uh, Van Dyke needed to pass out. She just was too trapped. But, you know, these are the sort of things you figure out in the first game. Miller has not been afraid to shoot with a hand in her face, but doesn't want to take on UTS here. Hamza, UTS awake to the danger. They're double teaming her now when she gets the ball on the outside, and that is a big stop as Grubasic loses handle. I don't know. I didn't see who called the change in defense, whether it was the coach, whether it was one of the girls here, but it's been a huge help for UTS. This zone has really thrown some questions up for Melbourne. Now Sainsbury, back to Mashmet. And Georges was fouled, just Hamza. knocked off balance as she shot there. Easy call for the referee. So, Anna George's studying education at UTS will go to the line. And these are, at the end of the game, in the fourth quarter, little, little errors, mental errors, sliding underneath there from Hamza. Didn't need to do it. George's hit one of probably four from that spot. Instead, she's going to hit three, going to have three throws where she's much more accurate. And the first one is good. George's up to 13 points for the game. see picture of concentration that one comes up short and Miller intervened to stop her getting her own offensive board Paisano gaps out to nine points time's becoming an issue for Melbourne Uni the little run they're on has stalled around this gap of nine and they can't get the shot for Miller really good work by Mashman to slow it down and a bucket here oh no we've seen it already in this quarter from Jelena and she had a foot on the line again. The demon sideline, it's caught it's caught several of them, but she was well over there as well. Mental reset here, they've got to know where the lines are on the court. Melbourne Uni still coming from a long way back. They need a bucket here to close the gap, to keep it nervous. There's been intensity in this game, but it's because they were coming from so far back when they started their run, and that is two for Miller, and that brings it back to seven. 1.55 to go. I wonder if they gonna get another stop here. Mashmet really goes to well the hoop, done. breezing through, and Jessica Mashmet has been the cool head in a crisis that UTS needed. That is a big play when you're tired, and she's playing back of the zone here, almost like a sweeper in soccer, and she still had the strength to get in the key there and score. 1.36 to go. Paisano. UTS sitting back in this zone defence. Miller just throws it up, turned Great it into play. a completed Ooh. pass, and it's blocked out. Seven seconds to go on the shot clock. Great work, Chalina, to come in and help. Um, they do need to know where that rebounder is, though. So Grubasic to inbound at the baseline. And out to Ellingworth. Drives down, has a plan, puts it up, can't get the drop. And that's a big rebound coming away for UTS. 1.20 to go, clock the enemy. Oh. And now Jelena started the game with a three, can't end it here. Rebound goes the way of Van Dyke though. Mashmet. Jelena cutting across. Sainsbury, this would be a fitting end. She can't get it to fall either, but we're into the last minute. 54 seconds to go. Miller is going to drive and kick it out. Paisano being closely guarded. 
Her turn to drive. Can't get two, and that might just do it. UTS now, 43 seconds to go. They've weathered the storm from Melbourne Uni. And now at the top of the key, Georges. Well, their shooting accuracy has abandoned them at the end of the afternoon. Melbourne Uni, Paisano thought about three, decides to go to the baseline, and it's just a miss fest at the end of this one. 20 seconds to go now. Sainsbury will calm it down. The shot clock is closed. 15 seconds. UTS are going to win, but they're not without a big, big scare here in this last quarter. And amazingly, Melbourne Uni never got closer than nine points, Roy, and yet that was enough to put the shivers. Well, so it should, because this was a game that UTS had very much in hand. They'll be disappointed they didn't get a big margin in this. We don't know how the season's going to shake out as a whole, but you never want to give up that percentage, that big margin, particularly with uh, Vic, Vic Uni already getting a 30-point margin on Melbourne last week. You never know how the lateral shakes out, but you don't want to be coughing that up. A um, lot of work for UTS to, to finish games off. So 10.2 seconds to go. There is a chance that Melbourne Uni, if they can get a stop and get one more bucket, they'll walk away with potentially a, a deficit of either seven or six. It's a win either way for them from where they came from. But it's also a reminder not to have those bad starts again, not to give a team that clearly has shooters those sort of open open air. If we go back to that 8 nil, 10 nil start, why that make it 8-4? And we're only at a four-point or five-point game here now. Just a reminder, it was 24-13 to 13 at quarter time. So they have been battling uphill all game. Got out to as many as a 22-point deficit. And UTS, of course, first of a road double for them. I guess in a sense it means that their practice session before their next play is going to have plenty to, to go on and of course they'll be able to review the video as well and just break down where it, it all started to slip for them. Oh, look, they can guarantee that when they run out next they'll be facing almost the exact same pressure zone that we've seen Melbourne run in that second half. They're going to need some solutions for their, how, to run, how to fight against zone. 10.2 seconds to go but I don't think it's going to be a case of letting the clock wind down here. Melbourne Uni want to reduce this deficit. They want to get the stop. And it's going to be a foul coming in against Renton. We're shooting. Yep. So to the line will go Gabrielle Van Dyke. You know, if we wind back to when uh, Van Dyke went off with her third foul, I think that's probably when uh, UCS's offensive struggle started. She'd had a nice little partnership going with Georges. So this is again a reason for them to get the fouls out of their game get some more discipline um, when they're around the ball. That makes the margin 10. So with 6.3 seconds to go, uh, Melbourne Uni going to aggressively go for one more bucket. They're not. So the clock winds down, and UTS get off to a winning start in the University Basketball League. Melbourne University are zip and two in the women's, but not without a much stronger showing than their opener when they went down to VU. Roy Ward, before we go to some of the key numbers at the end of this game, just your general thoughts on an impressive but hard-fought 10-point win for UTS. First half from uh, UTS, we saw a team who can shoot the ball with, a, with abandon, who have some real quality players and a, a real love of pressuring up. And uh, sadly, or dis something for them to work on is they couldn't hold that through the second half. So they've got to boost that second time around. Uh, Melbourne, I've got to say, Ellingsworth has been incredible today with 14 points and 18 rebounds. She's hardly Dennis Rodman out there, but she has been pulling in all the rebounds for Melbourne today. That sort of hustle is what Melbourne needs to stay competitive in this competition. As we see UTS celebrate, let's take a look at some of the stats that matter at the end of this one. And uh, really, the standout from a point scoring point of view, Nicholas Sainsbury, 20 points, ended up with 6 of 15 and 6 of 12 from 3 points. So those numbers are perhaps uh, mislead us as to just how great she was in the first half and then as things went on the shooting percentage got worse I didn't note it down but I reckon she would have been 6 or 7 or 6 of 8 when uh, when her cold streak hit but you know what that's uh, that's still a great start teams will be desperate to have a shooter like that who can uh, give them some, some return Georgia's 13 points 6 of 12 and Jelena 12 points 3 of 9 from 3 point range and then other scorers, eight points for Mashmet, six for Yeomans, nine for Van Dyke, and four for Mosquera. Some other leading numbers, 11 rebounds for Georges, nine for Mosquera, eight for Van Dyke, and eight for Mashmet, who's certainly not the tallest player. Assists, five each for Sainsbury and Van Dyke, four for Mashmet, and looking at uh, any other numbers that jump out, four fouls in the end, 
uh, sorry, three fouls in the end for Jelena, four fouls for Georges. So they managed to juggle their discipline at the end as well to not get anyone fouled out. And look, UTS just need to find a way to keep Shalina involved in the game. She was so massive in that opening term and she's barely had a shot after it. So they've got to find some ways to get her open for a shot. We also got to see, uh, I'd love to see Mashmet sort of find a few more shots for herself because she was really productive. 8-8 eight, eight and 4 assists, that's a great return. Van Dyke with her minutes cut by fouls, 9, 8, and 5 assists as well. That's These are good signs for this team at UTS if they can have all these different people giving them points and assists. And stat leaders for Melbourne Uni, in the end, Leia Hamja did not play many minutes, 10 minutes 45, but she got 15 points, 4 of 5 from 3-point range. So, did miss the first game, clearly limited minutes today. When her health improves and she can play more minutes, she's going to be a real concern. Any of those players are off the Melbourne bench, if they can come on and give their team more points than minutes, it's going to be a massive return. Um, and Hamza just will open the court for the rest of her teammates. When she's hitting that three-pointer, it's going to bring up the defence. And for other players who struggled offensively, they'll be able to get in like Nichols or um, Foster or someone. And Tiani Ellingworth, 14 points, 5 of 16. Uh, and as you mentioned, 18 rebounds for her, Roy. And then going down the team sheet, Miller with eight points, Renton with seven, and then uh, Ramakrishnan five, Foster four, Paisano four. Other stat leaders uh, looking at the assists, four points for Paisano, and uh, no one got into massive foul trouble. No one had more than three for Melbourne University. So, Roy Ward, uh, careful, careful, uh, watch out, careful. watch out. Oh, dear, sorry, we've nearly had a senior citizen stack it by getting caught on a cable. Um, anyway, uh, apologies viewers. Roy, uh, final thoughts on Melbourne Uni, what they do before they go into Game 3. They just need to keep on improving. If When you make that level of improvement in a game uh, from a 30-point loss to a close defeat like this, that's a big win. Off, that's a big win without getting the W. So they just got to keep building on this. They can't go backwards. Alright, so uh, we're just going to uh, recalibrate here and uh, settle in for the men, who you can see warming up, Teo Pelizzari and Roy Ward. If you're leaving us here, thanks for your company, the partners of the UBL on screen. Big thanks to them and to our hosts, Melbourne University today. Stick around for the men's. That's coming up in under half an hour from 3.30. But if you leave us here after the women's match, good afternoon.